Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel and it's time for another cigar box guitar tutorial. Now if you're a subscriber you might recognize this. This is the Hubcap Howler that I did a, um, I did a video about this recently. And this is the first cigar box guitar that I have ever owned that is tuned in Chicago tuning, which is D, G, B, E. So this is a new tuning for me, and I'd never tried to play anything um, on the DGBE tuning before, the Chicago tuning. Uh, but, and I've only had this for a short period of time, but I've already decided that I love this tuning. And I was like, you know what, I need to share this uh, with, with the folks out there, my followers. So there's a simple reason that I love it, and I'll get to that in just a second. But first, let me just talk about, like if you have a four string cigar box guitar already, the most common tuning Oh, fly flying around here. The most common tuning that you'll see on these is G, D, G, B. To do a D, G, B, E, what you wanna do is just go out and get a regular set of guitar strings like this. This is a GHS and see how the gauge is, it's a 12 gauge. I'd actually said in the video that I used 11s, but I ended up taking those off and going to 12s and 12s seem to work perfect for this 23 inch scale. So what that is, let's look at what that is on the back. That is. 12, 16, 19, 28 are the gauges. 12, 16, 19, 28. So fairly hefty strings on there and it just plays really nice, tunes up really nice, makes a really great DGBE. So if you've already got a four string guitar, you can probably get a pack like this and turn it into a DGBE. Now let me tell you about why I like the DGBE tuning, okay? So if you're used to a six string guitar, this tuning is gonna seem familiar because it's essentially the four highest strings of a six string guitar. Or if you're used to a baritone ukulele, it's the exact same tuning. A baritone ukulele is actually tuned DGBE. So it may be familiar if you're used to either one of those instruments, but even if you're not, this is a great tuning. And let me show you why. So if I just grab it here and um, I realize this, that that if you do this, and I'll talk a little more about the chord in a minute, but if you do this basic chord shape, I get a major chord. But since I'm fretting all four strings, I can move that major chord anywhere. I've got major chords all the way up and down the neck, anywhere I want them. You're gonna get way up here. So you can play a major chord anywhere very simply, but additionally, you can also do this and play a minor chord. So you have very easy chord shapes that allow you to play any minor chord or any major chord, and you only have to learn two shapes to basically master this thing. Now there's a lot of other stuff you can do on it as well, um, but let me just show you those two. So first let's talk about the major. So for the major chord, the major chord shape, I'm gonna start here with my ring finger and I'm gonna start on the lowest string and go upward, okay? So on the lowest string, I'm gonna put my ring finger on the third fret. Okay, then I'm gonna put my middle finger on the second fret of the next string, which is the uh, G string. Then I'm gonna take my first finger and I'm gonna push down both of the other two strings, the two highest strings on that first fret. Hopefully you can see that, what I'm doing there. And that shape you can move anywhere. And additionally, you can even move it down so when you get down to here, because remember I'm starting here with my ring finger on the third fret. Well, if you go down one more, just take this finger off and use the two open strings. And that's actually an E. So that means this would be an F and this would be a G and this would be an A and so on. Okay. Now, one other trick, if it's easier for you, if you like to play it this way, if this, if this way is comfortable for you, then by all means play it this way. Third fret, second fret, first fret, first fret, or you know, wherever you're sliding it to. But if that works for you, like that, or additionally, you can just take this first finger and just bar it across that entire first fret and then just do that with the third and second there. And that will also work. So either one of those chord shapes, whether you'd rather play it like this or like this, doesn't matter, you're still playing those same 
four strings. So that's how you play a major chord anywhere you want on the fretboard. And the way you figure out what chord it is, is it's controlled by this low string. So that is gonna be a D, right? So remember when I did this, I said it was an E chord? Well, if that's a D, then the second fret would be an E. So whatever your lowest string is, that's gonna control the chord. So this would be an E, and then if you slide it up one, you get an F and a G, and that's because that note right there is a G, and so on and so forth. So that's how you figure out all the chords, and you can do every major chord. Now, what if you need a minor, like I said, okay? So the minor chord shape is just a little bit different. And what we do for the minor chord shape is, again, I'll, I'll demonstrate it here at the third fret. So I'm gonna take my ring finger, put it on the third fret of the low string. I'm gonna take my pinky, put it on the third fret of the G string there right below it. And then I'm gonna take my middle finger and put it on the second fret here of the B string. And then finally, I'm gonna come in on the first fret of the E string there. So the chord shape's similar, but it's a little bit different, all right? But what's really different about this one, well, first of all, let's just hear it. So we're definitely getting a minor. Okay, but what's really different is now when we go to that minor shape, it's this note, this note right here, or the G string note that controls what, uh, what chords you're playing. So if you look at that, this is the G string, right? So G, A, A sharp. So when I, what I just played there, that's an A sharp minor. And this would be a B minor. And that means this would be a C minor. And this would be a D minor, okay? So as long as you can figure that out, you can now play anything that uses major chords or minor chords. Okay, and so using that formula, now think how many songs you can play if you can play every major chord and every minor chord. There's a lot of songs that are unlocked. Now, for starters, let's just try this. So if I do like this, right, we'll start with the open. So I've got my ring finger on the second fret of the low string, my middle finger on the first fret of the next string, and then the last two open. And that's an E. Then if I was to take my chord shape here and slide it up like this. So I'm basically going to where I'm barring at the fifth, or again, you could do it this way if that's more comfortable, but I'm barring at the fifth and then having that. So that's gonna be an A. And then up two frets is gonna be a B. So now you can do your basic one, four, five progression or root four, five progression. Or, you know, you could do it in any key. If you'd rather start here, you could do. So it's real easy to basically transpose anything now with major chords. All right, so if we wanna combine the minor and the major, so if we were trying to do like, uh, keep it in the major key, but use the minor. So like in E, remember we're playing an E here, we would use the C sharp minor. So that would be right here. So that would be, if we use our basic minor shape that I showed you, you'd slide it up to the sixth fret here, your ring finger up to the sixth fret, and that would give you your C sharp minor. So then what you could do is something like this. If you want to just throw this in in the middle of your, uh, your strumming, you could do a... Something like that, and then you go right back into your... So, or you could do any sort of combination of your minors and majors. So it does take a little bit of practice to go from, actually, you see, I kind of fumble through it right there, but to go from this shape to this shape does take a little bit of practice just because they're very close. So that, that muscle memory, you probably do need to practice that a little bit. But anyway, the point being, you know, with just those couple chord shapes, you can now unlock a whole lot of chords on this thing and it's just a fun little tuning. So that is the DGBE, the Chicago tuning on Cigar Box Guitar. Um, hopefully you like this video. If you do, go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button below because I've been posting several of these um, CBG tutorials, about one a month so far this year. So. Um, there's a playlist of those linked in the description if you're if you're curious. But uh, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.